today on the finale of FNAF Unsolved. We take a step back and look at everything so far. We will begin to draw connections between events and start to get a sense of what is really happening in this universe. Yes, this is the finale of the season. Five nights, five kids, five episodes of FNAF Unsolved. When I think about it, it doesn't really feel like five at all. I made the first episode way back in December last year, but I didn't have the channel available to me. Somehow since then I've made another four episodes. Anyway, don't worry, because it will not stop at five. We're going to round everything up today about the actual technology behind the robots and how all of these murdered kids link together. 1983. The Bite of 83. For Afton's son, the worst possible fate. A giant Fredbear crushing his skull. It was all the workings of his older brother. 1985. The Missing Children's Incident. For six children, including the other co-founder's daughter, plus a dog. Their fate was in William Afton, in a spring bonnie suit. They were lured, captured and killed. 1987, the bite of 87. An individual took an attack from Mangle to the frontal lobe, but survived. What happened? These three massive incidents all had a lot of things in common. They were all aimed at children. They all had something to do with Fazbear Entertainment and their cause was due to malfunctioning animatronics and a killer in a suit. But theorists say that the souls of the dead are what are powering these animatronics. They go savage at night, chasing Afton and hunting night guards. What is wrong with them? They all contain Remnant. What is Remnant? It's something that William Afton worked extremely hard on. The thing that makes the animatronics more lifelike. The thing that powers animatronics at night. The thing that makes them go savage. But to understand what Remnant truly is, we have to look at the workings of Afton Robotics. So what other me is saying is that I could be killed and my soul could be captured. Then that soul goes into molten metal and then put inside a robot and then I have control over the robot. So. What if Mario was the same in Super Mario Odyssey? He just throws his hat at things and possesses different creatures with his undead soul. Whoa. Just... Whoa. Afton Robotics is the company under William Afton's name. All of these blueprints shown were created by William Afton himself and shows him to be the one responsible for the usage of Remnant. Let's introduce ourselves to the Scooper a tool that Afton has hidden underneath the basement of his own home. The scooper is a powerful machine that acts as an injection. As shown by the blueprints of it, the scooper held remnants that were permanently injected into the animatronics to make them more lifelike. However, there's something else that needs to be mentioned about the scooper. This is point D. When heated, no observable motion keeping a heated tank at sustained temperature. Substance should be malleable, but not more. There is a possibility that overheating might neutralize the effects permanently. It sounds like the only way to discard remnant and free the souls of the children is by heating it up. A fire, perhaps? Just like the fire at Fazbear Fright in 2023. I'm really starting to see a few connections here. People were using Afton's remnant weaknesses against him, not only freeing the souls of the dead children who deserved to be put at rest, but also burning the killer alive for eternal hell. Sorry, I'm overdoing this section, aren't I? I'm just so excited. Finally, finally this all will be over. The killer dies, the dead is put to rest, it's the end. William Afton escaped the fire, and more traces of remnant-infused robots were found. Are you kidding me? It's not the end. Yet. Remnant doesn't explain everything, however. For example, if all of the robots had Remnant inside them, then why can Golden Freddy teleport through walls and create hallucinations? Why does the puppet claim to be more powerful than the others? 
of her own speech. The others are under my protection. The others are like animals, but I am very aware. I'm from the phone guy. I'll be honest, I never liked that puppet thing. It's always thinking, and it can go anywhere. Uh, I don't think the Freddy mask will fool it, so just don't forget the music box. Finally, why is Mangle the least lifelike? I think it's time for a theory. Theory number one. It's all just a video game, so it doesn't matter, and anything goes. And yes, I'm breaking the fourth wall by saying this. Actually, theory number two could just be that it was all a dream. <laughs> the first, th third theory suggests that although all the animatronics have thrown it inside them, not all of them have the same amount. If Golden Freddy had more remnant, it would be plausible that he would be more powerful. Likewise, if Mangle only had a dog soul, it would probably be less powerful than a human soul. There's one slight problem with this, however. So far, we've found five cases of missing children, two bite victims, another separate girl, and a dog. That only sums up to nine souls. The problem here is that there are many different types of characters, in many different types of styles, in many different ages, in many different establishments, in many different buildings, all over America. So how can just nine souls power them all? Maybe, just maybe, instead of Golden Freddy having more than one soul, the others have less than one. Gabriel is the child assigned to Freddy, but he also powers Toy Freddy, Withered Freddy, Rockstar Freddy, and the other hundred that there are. It's a stretch but this quantum entanglement could play a huge role into learning about the secret technology of Remnant. And there you go, an explanation better than it's all just a game, or it's all just a dream. Do you like this theory, or do you not? Vote now, in the poll, and discuss your reasoning in the comment section below. There's one final thing to round this all off. The puppet gave gifts. The puppet wanted revenge against Safton. And once the children's souls were freed forever, there were two children who were not put at rest on the happiest day. Puppet and Golden Freddy. They still wanted to torment Afton for his actions, so the story continues. But the question is, what was so special about Cassidy in Golden Freddy? Why were she and the puppet the only ones who wanted revenge? That is a mystery for another season, but for now, let's put our minds to rest and leave this case unsolved. <laughs>